This video is going to look at the fundamentals of routing with Angular. We're going to start by creating an Angular app from scratch, and then we're going to begin by registering different routes. We're then going to create some components and display those components for the different routes. And then lastly, we're going to look at nested routes and how we can define them with our routing with parameterized routes. To begin, we're going to create a new Angular app with ng new my dash app. So our application will be called my dash app. We will select Y for add Angular routing, and we will see what this includes later on. And I will use CSS just for the styling. And now if we open up our project in VS Code, the first thing I will do is just clear out the app component HTML file. So we have a blank canvas and a blank home screen that we can now begin working from. So our app's going to include four buttons at the top to navigate to different pages. So first we're going to have a home button, then we're going to have an about button, we're going to have one for the members, and lastly one for a contact page. We can see what our app is going to look like by running ng-serve in the terminal, and this is going to open up our application on localhost 4200. And if I just open this up within the browser, we can now see what our app looks like. So Angular works by displaying different components for different routes that we navigate to. So currently we only see the app.component.html file as we don't actually have any components within our application. So if we select the home button, what we will want to do is to open up the home component. And when we select the about button, we want to see the about component and so on for the contacts and also the member. So first what we're going to do is to use Angular to create these components. We do this by typing ngGC and then the component name. So for our first home page, that's going to be ngGC home. And GC stands for generate component. And what we can see is a new folder has now been created called home. And this will have the simple HTML file saying home works within it. I will now repeat this for the other pages. So we have one for the about page, one for the members, and also one for the contact page. But how do we actually display them on the page as and when we require them? So first we have to specify exactly where on the page we want to display them. And we do this by specifying a router outlet tag in the app component. And then we will tell Angular when we want to display them by using routing. So for example, we only want to show the home component when we go to the empty URL. If we want to go to forward slash about, then that means we will be showing the about page. If we go to forward slash members, we will only want to show the members component. And if we go to forward slash contact, then we will want to show the contact component. Now let's just take a step back to when we defined our Angular project and we specified Angular routing as yes. So when we set that up, the instruction created this app routing module file. And then if we go to our app module file, we can see it imported there. So at the top of our app routing module file, we can see the router module and routes has been imported. The router module provides a routing library to enable different view components to be displayed. In the ng module decorator, we are configuring the router module with the routes it can begin listening to for the browser location changes by importing the router module and assigning for root with an array of routes from above. We can then export the router module to make it available to the rest of the application. So in this constant called routes, we specify exactly which route pattern we want to show for each component. We do this by specifying a curly brace and defining the path and the component to show. So for an empty path, we want to see the home component. If we have the path for about, we want to show the about component. For the path members, we want to see the member component and for the path of contact, 
we want to see the contact component. Now if we navigate back to our website, we can see that Homeworks is being printed on the empty URL, so forward slash uh, empty. And it's printed here because we've specified the router outlet below our buttons. And if I change the route to forward slash about, we can now see it has changed to the about component because we can see about works is now being printed. And the same applies for the members and lastly, the contact component. Now let's try access the route for one that isn't specified, say for example, contacts with an S at the end. The page doesn't load any component, but I would like it to show sort of an error page just saying, you know, we don't have a route for this, so maybe this URL is incorrect. So for that, I'm going to create a new component just called error. So I'll do ng, gc, and then error. And then if I open up the HTML file, I'm just going to change the font color to red, just because it's an error page. And then if I head back into our app routing module, I can specify a new path with two asterisks, and this will match all paths that are not mentioned before it, and I will load the error component. So it's really important to note that Angular will match these paths from top to bottom. So if I move the error path all the way to the top, every single path that we go to in our application is going to match the two asterisks. So therefore, no matter which route we go to, we're always going to see that error component. If we want to display a consistent route at the top of the page for unknown routes, such as forward slash error, what we can do is we can define the route with the error component with forward slash error. And then we can tell the route with two asterisks to be redirected to forward slash error. This is a slightly neater solution and it takes us back to forward slash error every single time. So next what we're going to do is update our buttons to navigate to our different components uh, upon a click. So one way we can do this is by adding the router link directive to our button to take the user to the new route. One way that router link differs from a typical anchor tag with a href is that the router link will not reload the page. So within our application, we will maintain any variables or any states, uh, maybe the user has logged in, any kind of details like this that we already have within our page. Now we can see our buttons are working because new components are being loaded and the URL is changing every time that we click them. So the final part of this tutorial involves creating nested routes for our application. And nested routes are routes within routes. So let's say we have our members page and we want to have many different members on this page and we would like to see pieces of information for those members as we click them. So first I'm just going to add a few buttons. So let's say we have member number one, number two, and also number three. And when we select one of these numbers, we will want to display a component below it, giving us information about that member. So what I want to do is change the route to the member ID when I select the button. So this would be forward slash members and then forward slash one, or forward slash two, or forward slash three. So to achieve this, I will add a click listener to our button with the method go to member, and I will pass in an ID there. I will then create the method in the component file where it accepts the ID of type number. Now what I will need to do is to navigate to that new route. I'm going to need the current route we're on, and I will need to tell Angular to change to this current route forward slash the number of the ID. So for this, I will first import the Angular router and the activated route from the at Angular router package. And I will inject these through the constructor of this component file. I will then use this.router.navigate to change our route. And I will pass in the ID as a parameter and instruct Angular to append the ID 
relative to the current route. So when we're on the members page, forward slash members is the current route. And what we will be doing is appending forward slash one, two or three to that route to get to those individual members. If we try to select the button, we will get the error component. And the reason we're getting this error component is because the routes of members forward slash one or members forward slash two are not actually registered to the application yet. So our Angular app doesn't really know what to do with these. Now, before we register these routes, we will create the component for each member that we want to show. So I'll use ng, gc, and then single dash member to create a new component. And ideally, we would like the component to show information for each member as they're selected. But to keep it simple, we're just going to display the member's ID in the HTML. So I will put welcome member, and then within two curly braces, the member ID. But where does this member ID actually come from? So the member ID will come from the route. So when we go to forward slash one, that will be our members ID. So in the component file, we're going to define a new number called member ID, and we're just going to initialize it to zero. Then within the ng on init function, which is called each time the single member component is initialized, we will want to extract the ID from the route. So first we will need to register these new routes to follow the pattern of forward slash members, forward slash one, and so forth for member two and three. And if we head back into our app routing module, we can register child routes to our members path by adding a further argument of children. So this will take a new array of paths. Now what we can do is type each of these new paths for ID one, two, and three, However, this can be cumbersome and is not a dynamic way of defining routes. For example, if we had more or less members join our application, we would then need to individually register more and more routes. Instead, what we can do is register one parameterized path using a colon, and I will just call this member. And the component to load will be the single member component. If I go back to the member component HTML file, I can now add a further router outlet tag where the child component will be displayed. And that child component is going to be our single member component. So to complete our routing, we just need to extract the member parameter from our route at the top and change the member ID number within our component file. If we open the single member component file, we will first need to obtain access to the activated route. So I will inject this through the constructor with private route and import activated route from the Angular router package. Then in the ng on init function, we can subscribe to the route URL. So whenever it changes, we can access a callback function and that function will reassign our member ID value to this. That function will assign the member ID value to this.route.snapshot to obtain the current route that we have in our URL. Then we can access its parameters and access the member in squared brackets. And this member string that we have matches the name of the parameter that we have in our app routing module. And I'm just going to add a plus sign to the start to cast this to a number. And now if we select different members, we can now see the number update both in the URL and also down in the HTML below. So that concludes this video on the fundamental routing with Angular. We've looked at how we can create different routes for different components, how we can configure the app routing module with different routes to display for different paths, and also a little deeper into child routes and accessing parameters of that route. So do have a play about moving the router outlet at different positions so we can see how that's going to be reflected in the HTML and defining nested routes such as child routes of child routes. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and feel welcome to also check out my other tutorials on Java, TypeScript, and there's also going to be many more videos on Angular to come.